Hello everybody. Today I would like to give you guys a little uh, overview of the soluble and insoluble salts lab on LabFlow. The first thing I'm going to do is get this experimental PDF open. I've already got that here. And uh, what I want to bring to your attention in particular is this table right here. This is going to be a very important one for us. The next thing that we need to get into is our sample data, soluble and insoluble salts. That's going to look like this guy here with this picture of a well plate and these different colored precipitates or no reactions inside of them. I'm going to tile this over here and then move over and Open up the report. So once we're into the report, we're going to start off with this first spot plate results section here. And this is where students get really confused. What exactly are we going to do here? So the, I'm going to tell you there's two components. Says number one, we're going to use the rules in this table here to decide whether or not there should be a precipitate or no reaction. You can see that you actually have a choice of many different colored precipitates, but the only one we're going to use is white precipitates. So all your answers should either be no reaction or white PPT, white precipitate. So how do we use this table to decide whether or not we should have a no reaction or a white precipitate? Let's go through this first row first. So the first row is carbonate. So if we come over here, we can see for rule five here, that is for carbonates. And the statement is that most carbonates are insoluble. So if it's not soluble, that means that it's going to come out of solution and form a precipitate. So our default for carbonates is going to be white precipitate, but there's going to be some exceptions. So our exceptions are group one A, are alkali metals and ammonium carbonates. So let's go through here and see if we have any exceptions. Potassium is a group 1A element, so that's going to be an exception. Potassium is not going to be our default white precipitate. It's going to be no reaction. Calcium is group 2, so it follows the basic rules that it's insoluble. This is going to be a white precipitate. Barium, also group two, and not ammonia. So we're going to put down white precipitate for that. And again, aluminum is not a group 1A, nor is it ammonia. So this gets white precipitate. Let's do the next one. If we have chlorine, chloride ion, we have to figure out which rule is going to apply to that. So it looks like that's rule number four here, our halides rule. We got our chlorines there, and the statement is that most halides are soluble, so they're going to stay in solution. They're not going to form a precipitate. Therefore, our default for halides is going to be no reaction, and our exceptions are going to be silver, mercury, and lead halides. Okay, so let's go look for our exceptions first. None of these are silver, mercury, or lead, so there's no exceptions. And all of our halides are soluble, therefore this entire row gets no reaction. That was an easy one. Next one, we have hydroxide. If we come over here to rule number eight, we can see that most hydroxides are insoluble. Therefore, our default for the hydroxides is going to be forming a white precipitate. Exceptions for this is group 1A, ammonia, and barium. Where are our exceptions over here? We already know potassium is a group 1A. And also, over here, we have barium, which is going to be another exception. So, we will put down for our default ones, white precipitate. And for our exceptions, we're going to put in no reaction. 
I'm going to leave it to you guys to figure out the nitrates, phosphates, and sulfates sections. And we'll move on to the second salt spot plate results. For this one, we're going to use that other document. So we're going to be looking instead at this guy here. And basically, we're just looking at this picture and then translating that over to here. So for this first one, I'm going to call that first one there a white precipitate. For the copper, I'm going to call that a blue precipitate. For the iron, I'm going to say that's brown. And the lead, that looks pretty clearly to be a white precipitate. And so on and so forth until you've filled this out matching your spot plate results. Finally, there are a few brief questions down here. Um, I really don't think that they're too tricky. Just little drop downs for you guys to do. And, uh, and that's it. That's the whole lab. This is a pretty quick and easy one um, once you guys see what exactly is all involved and expected.